The lead author of this paper is Devesh Jha, who is not here today because he is defending his thesis. So I think we can all agree that it's okay that he's not here. <laughs> I'll be presenting. Uh, I'm also a co-author co on this paper, and uh, this uh, paper is basically about how we can do temporal learning using deep learning and Gaussian processes uh, put together. Uh, some of the ideas that you see are uh, similar to what you heard before was basically use deep learning as a feature extractor tool and then uh, build models on top of it to do certain things that are relevant for your task. So it's, it's, in, it's in that line of, uh, um, uh, in, in that direction. So uh, obviously I think everybody has been already coached very well what deep learning is, but just uh, it is good at handling large volumes of data. In fact, it needs large volume of data because of the number of parameters, uh, like images, it has been shown it works very well. Uh, but when you're looking at temporal behavior, then you are looking at uh, models which where the, the number of parameters grows very fast. If you are looking at many uh, sequence of images that you want to analyze, such as video data in which you are monitoring something. Uh, Gaussian process, on the other hand, is another approach in which you can model uh, temporality, but it doesn't scale very well with the dimension of the data or the uh, the size of the data. So basically, the idea was, can we uh, use deep learning for the initial bit? Can we analyze the images that we are getting from uh, uh, the process that we are monitoring and then uh, look at the features and uh, develop temporal models on top of it? So that's the overall idea. and. Uh, and the, and the process that we are looking at is uh, one of the um, few data sets in pub PHM which are sort of public or is available to share with people <laughs> uh, without much constraints is uh, so the, that you saw earlier is this combustion data set in which you are looking at the uh, flame which is being combusted in a, in a, in a laboratory situation uh, and uh, we are li basically looking at how the flame behaves over a period of time as the fuel ratio and other parameters are changed and it goes from stable to unstable. And um, again, the idea is can we do detection as quickly as possible and uh, uh, have the lowest false alarm rate. And the overall idea is that can once you can do this detection, this can be sent as a feedback towards better control uh, and uh, better adaptation, sort of a fault tolerant control. So uh, basically, to give you a little bit of background on as to what the process is, uh, what happens that uh, the, the chart on the on the left is showing you that there is a very thin margin that the uh, engines or combustion need to operate in to make sure that you are not producing pollutants like NOx, and at the same time uh, your engine uh, the flame is stable and you are not leading towards uh, the blowout. So for a, given everything else being fixed. Then the velocity uh, of the, uh, the the mixture that is entering the combustion chamber and the equivalence ratio, which is the uh, what is the mixture of uh, fuel to uh, air, tells you uh, whether you are in the safe zone, which is there will be no blowout, or whether you are in a zone where they'll be producing these NOx or pollutants. So there is a very thin margin to operate on, and that's sort of a challenge for uh, uh, for controls engineers to make sure that your engine operates in that. Uh, and what happens that if you are not uh, operating properly, uh, there is sort of a self uh, loop that develops in which uh, fluctuations in velocity of the material that is in there leads to heat, uh, fluctuations in heat release, and that leads to fluctuation in pressure, and it sort of self-feeding, and it cert certainly goes into an unstable mode, which is not good for the combustor. The goal is can be, uh, can be detected, and uh, and the just those are some of the details of the data set that we have used it's a high speed video uh, image that was uh, put at the combustion chamber and we are looking at the images that are coming out of that uh, high speed camera so uh, um, first i wanted to show that we thought can we build a very simple uh, model to see uh, what kind of information is there in the data is there any temporality in this uh, sequence of images which we uh, uh, can see, and are there other ways to model it? So in this uh, chart, what I'm showing is that on the top, you see you are looking at the difference of images uh, um, uh, from some initial condition. And as the process goes forward, we are looking at the 
the difference of the initial condition and the current condition and you're just looking at the norm. So basically saying, can you just look at the intensity basically that has changed from the initial to now and uh, do you see any patterns? So as you can see in the stable case, uh, it is there are there is some uh, temporal pattern, but it looks mainly noisy. But when it goes to unstable, remember the the self loop that I talked about, because of that self feeding uh, condition, it goes into this cy cyclic behavior. So there is definitely something uh, in in the time domain that is to be uh, extracted out of this data. And we are like, okay, we can see this temporal behavior. Can we just uh, build a simple temporal model to see uh, if we can detect the two classes. And in this case, what we did, used a simple Gaussian process with uh, uh, an exponential kernel, fit a model for the known uh, training set for stable and a known unstable case, again, in the training set. And we said, now look at the likelihood ratio for the validation class and what can you say about whether it is uh, stable versus unstable. So those are the different ROC curves that are that I'm showing here, and you, as you can see, it, it can do a pretty decent job. But uh, the the sort of the caveat is, uh, and I've mentioned this in the bottom of the page, that it needs about 30 frames of images before uh, the process is able to tell whether you are in the cycl cyclic form or in the non-stable form, because it has to see at least half of the cycle, right? So sort of the Nyquist uh, criteria over here. So for at 30 frames, if you are looking at a detection of 99%, uh, that's the detec detection rate you want you can get about 4.85 uh, false alarm rate. The false alarm rate and detection rates kind of look good, but the 30 frames is, it says that you need to observe it for that much period of time. On the other side, if we, we said, what if we did just image analysis? And we said these images are IID, there is no temporality in the data. And we just uh, look at a, a CNN, uh, uh, have a couple of uh, layers to it and see, can we just detect uh, stable images from unstable images, and that is sort of some of the things uh, CNN is very good at doing. So this slide is giving the details of what the network looked like, and as you can see, uh, um, what happens that um, uh, you are, so in this case, there is no lag, one image, and you make a decision. But for night, the same detection rate, you get about 5.28% false alarm. And what, what the ROC curve being like that is showing you that uh, there is sort of a gap. Either you are not detecting anything or you certainly go to uh, a point where you have to have a certain amount of false alarm rate because the way the data is. So in this case, we are completely ignoring uh, how the images are changing over time, uh, but only looking at one of the images. And in the previous case, we are looking at only a very crude measurement of uh, an, an image and looking at how it is changing over time. So the obvious uh, thing was, what if we put them together? And as I said in the beginning, that was uh, uh, the idea, and, and what this helps us do is that instead of having a deep CNN, which will have larger number of parameters, if you're looking at temporality within the CNN itself by having a convolution in the sort of the z-axis too, you are looking at only uh, the temporality after the, uh, the data has been sort of compressed to a much, much lower dimension. Uh, a point to note that in this case, uh, uh, the, the CNN was, um, I mean, as it is, it was used uh, instead of, l another approach could have been that we use the deep learning as uh, an unsupervised feature extractor, like some of the examples we saw earlier in which we are doing a feature extraction just by trying to do sort of an autoencoder reconstruction. But we thought uh, that that, work, that will work only if the natural topology of the data is also relevant for classification. Right, so it, it might very well be that the features that you have identified for using autoencoder are good to reconstruct the signal, but they're not good for the classification that you're looking for. So in this case, what we did, that we said the first step is to build this. Do instance by instance classification, find the features which are relevant to do classifications in an IID, instance by instance sense. Then look at the last layer, look at those features, feed into a Gaussian process. Uh, so it's a second step. And uh, at that point, say, can we build a model? Similar uh, criteria, um, use some training, unstable training, stable, uh, build two models, look at the likelihood ratios, and I'm showing the ROC curves. So um, the paper presents more detail about a lot of other experiments we did, but just to give you an idea, uh, uh, the GP, as I said earlier, uh, in 30 frames, you can get to about 4.85 false alarm rate at a 99% detection. 
CNN only, uh, I, sh I should have said one. Uh, it's one frame, not zero. <laughs> <laughs> I meant how many uh, history, how much history. So uh, um, 5.28, uh, yeah, it's not magic, it needs data. So 5.28%, uh, uh, per uh, but if you combine the two, if you bring in temporality, and as we saw, there is enough to uh, look in there, you can get a much, much better false alarm rate, and you can, just with five frames, you can now make much, much better detection. So, so it, it's basically a, a case in which uh, we are saying that CNN can be used uh, or deep learning can be used as a way to get from the large dimensional data set that you have to something that you can work with more easily. But if your job is classification, it might be better to start, uh, look for features that are discriminative, not necessarily explanatory just for the data set. And then uh, go for the next step of model. Uh, one of some of the things we're thinking of doing which has is not there in this paper is uh, to do this as a one step process because earlier the optimization is at in two steps, so maybe there is something to gain if you do this as a one step process. And um, uh, as I said earlier, the, the, the idea is not necessarily just to do combustion de detection, but it is saying that if you have a sequence of images, you expect temporality. This is one way to model your data. And you see that a lot of times, for example, when you're mon monitoring corrosion, you are looking at images. They might, may not be high frequency images, but they will be over periods of time. And uh, you want to see how the size of the corroded area is growing and how the fault is growing and things like that. So uh, at that point, I will end. Uh, thank you.